When considering a job in the field of tech, there's one question that stands above all else. How much do coders make? Now, this is a very valid question. According to US News and World Report, software developers rank number one in best tech jobs, number two in best STEM jobs, number three in the best top 100 jobs, and to cap it all off, it ranks in the top 20 of the best 100 paying jobs. And no doubt the reason why it ranks so highly is because according to the same source, software developers make a median of about $97,800 per year. And in today's economy where inflation seems to be ever increasing, that's a good chunk of change in your pocket. And no doubt aspiring software developers looking to break into the field because of the pay have probably seen videos like this. I make six figures, 100 to 110. 180 grand now? 200-ish, yeah. 250,000 a year. Over 400,000 annually. However, and this is probably a hot take for most people, but I think this is actually the wrong question that aspiring software developers should be asking. A more important question to be asking instead of solely how much do computer programmers make is which field of computer programming do I want to study in order to break in to the tech industry? And so to help you answer that question in today's video, we're going to take a look at five fields of computer programming that number one, pay very well, and number two, have a very modest growth rate in terms of job opening expectancies over the course of the next 10 years. So with all that being said, let's jump right in. Now the first field of computer programming and probably the one that is most well known is the field of front end engineering. Now in short, front end software developers are responsible for the consumer slash user facing pages that you might see when you go to purchase an item on a website, for example. Being able to create not only an aesthetically pleasing page, but also an experience that is very easy for the customer to navigate is no small task, which is why companies pay very modestly for engineers in the front end space. Now, according to Indeed.com, the average salary for front end engineers is about $114,000 annually with an expected growth rate of about 16%. Now, by no means an exhaustive list that I'm about to give, but the typical languages of front end engineers is HTML, CSS, JavaScript, as well as the React and Node.js framework. So if you're looking to break into the front end space, I would highly recommend studying at least a couple of those types of languages. Now, a second extremely popular computer programming field is what we would call the backend engineering space. As the name implies, this is actually the counter to the front end engineering space. You see, whereas front end engineers care more about the user experience and the aesthetics of a website, backend engineers are actually responsible for making that website run. For example, you as a user might see a nice shiny button that you can click on, but what exactly happens when you click on that button? That's exactly where backend engineers come into play. Whether it be building out APIs or interacting with different types of databases, backend engineers need to have a holistic knowledge of exactly what is going on on a website to ensure the smoothest and most efficient experience possible for the user on that website. Now, the good news is, is that with these extra responsibilities, the pay is actually slightly higher than what a front end engineer typically makes. And according to Indeed.com, the average salary for a back-end engineer is about $154,000, with the expected growth rate to be about 25% going forward. Now, if the list of coding languages that I gave in the front end engineering section was not exhaustive, this is definitely not an exhaustive list. But if you're looking to become a back end engineer, languages like Java, Python, as well as the C suite languages like C, C sharp and C++ are probably going to be your best areas to study to guarantee yourself the highest likelihood of landing a back end engineering job. Now, the beautiful thing about computer programming is that it is not only applied to the web development space, but also into interpreting data. You see, the third field that is a very popular field and one that I have personally chosen to pursue myself in the field of computer programming is that of data science. Now, for those of you who might not be familiar, data science is a field that sort of combines the best of math, statistics, and computer programming. And so as a result, this is actually probably one of the first fields that we're discussing in this video that requires just a little bit more knowledge on top of your ability to simply program. You see, the reason why data scientists are in such high demand is because the amount of data that humanity is producing every single year is only increasing exponentially. I recall doing a report back in college where in the year 20. 16 or 2017, more data had been produced in that single year than the entirety of human history combined. Now, according to Indeed, data scientists make about $123,000 per year. However, their expected growth rate going forward is about 36%, which is higher than any other occupation on this list. Your basic two languages of data science are going to be R 
and Python. Now, while it might seem good that there are only a couple of languages, recall that you are going to also need to have a good understanding of math and statistics in conjunction with the languages you know how to program in. The fourth field in computer programming that is also gaining a lot of popularity nowadays is one that I would argue is actually probably an evolution of the data scientist role, and that is the role of a machine learning engineer. Now, out of all the roles discussed thus far, the role of machine learning engineer is probably the one that is most difficult to break into right away, simply because of the amount of information you must know before getting into that role. The reason for this is because machine learning engineers or MLEs are at the cutting edge of AI, predictive modeling, time series forecasting, and a bunch of other fields that are not intuitive to the average programmer. As a result, these types of roles often require a master's degree or an equivalent number of years and experience before you can even be considered for a role like this. Now, as you might be able to guess, because of these demands, the machine learning engineer actually comes in at about $161,000 per year, according to Indeed, making it the highest paying salary discussed thus far and a modest growth rate of about 23%. Now, by far the most heavily used language by machine learning engineers is the Python programming language. However, knowing a second language like Java or C++ will also go a long way in making you a very competitive candidate. And finally, last, but by no means least is the area that pays perhaps the most lucratively for programming abilities, and that is the area of quantitative finance. Now, for those of you who might not be familiar with the area of quantitative finance, essentially hedge funds and investment banks pay quantitative finance professionals a lucrative amount of money because they have to be able to predict which way the market might go in a matter of seconds to beat out their competitor. As a result, the demand for the skills that a quantitative financial analyst must possess are extremely high, which is why this role is actually probably one of the most difficult to break into, especially starting out right away. This is because not only do you need to know a low level coding language like C++ or Java, but also because you have to have a good understanding in the areas of economics, of finance, of mathematics, of statistics, and so much more. However, because of this, the average salary for those in quantitative finance is somewhere between $200,000 and $300,000. But the true benefit of these positions is that you're not capped at simply that salary. For example, there are stories out there of those in quantitative finance making millions of dollars because they make the overall portfolio of the investment firm that they work for billions. Now, while the growth rate might be on the lower side of about 10%, the salary very much so offsets the lower growth rate. As I mentioned before, the knowledge of low-level languages like C++ and Java and probably some experience in Python are the languages required for roles like this. And so there you have it, you guys, five fields of computer programming that you today can start a journey down in order to secure a job and make a good amount of money within the field. However, the last piece of advice that I would give anyone going into the field of computer programming is that while the salary might be good, there really is no shortcut for the work that you're going to have to put into learning how to program. But that pretty much wraps this video up. I hope you guys found this helpful. If you did, leave a like, comment down below which area you find most interesting and which one you might pursue in your own time for a career of your own. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. See you there.